Kate Nash and this is the beginning of Kate Nash's Rock and Roll for Girls After School Music Club. I'm going to be interviewing a bunch of really cool female writers and artists um, who hopefully will inspire you to go out there and do something yourself. PRS is the organisation that pays musicians royalties when their music is played in public places. Only 14% of PRS goes to women in the UK. I was shocked by that statistic and I want to do something about it. You know, we always just lived out in the middle of nowhere, so there's nowhere we could go to like, there's just like these old countrymen pubs, do you know what I mean, where you, <laughs> you just got looked at if you went in, so we couldn't really do that. So we, yeah, we just used to try and write songs and sing together in our bedroom. We just sort of ended up doing it accidentally, really, and it was like, for a while it still felt a bit like, this isn't a real thing, it's kind of like, you know, we're just hanging out as friends and we're just starting to make songs together and then like gradually it's sort of a slow realisation of like actually we can make this something viable and something that you know can mean something and that we can work hard at. When I was in school I started a band with like three of my best friends and we were into like Riot Girls so we thought we had to do a Riot Girl band. And we actually played a gig in our school, which was, yeah, quite funny. The teachers told us off a bit though, but it was <laughs> alright. <laughs> okay, so I think the first time that I properly got into music was like, things like Blur and Pulp and Bjork. It's like going to the open mics, like just visiting and watching other people play, and then I thought, alright, okay, I'm gonna do it, it's gonna be my chance, I'm gonna, it's gonna be my moment at the open mic. And so then I went down with my guitar and um, played a song and people like, I mean obviously a lot of old men came up to me and said, oh you can't play the guitar, love, can you? But like, people really liked the lyrics, so I was like, right, I'm gonna try and write more songs. When I left school I had to decide what I wanted to do at university and on a whim I chose a music course and it was there that I really started to work hard at songwriting and thinking that maybe I could try and do it as a living in some way and it's amazing how much putting in the time and effort to really work at something changes it from being about bursts of inspiration that you have to wait for to something that you're in control of. I guess when we were doing the band in school it was never really a serious thing um, and I joined Chasms when I was like 21 so I, I even then at the beginning of chasms we were just like it's just for fun but we started getting a lot more gigs than we planned and then I don't know it, there was never really a line where I could say we crossed and be like we went from fun to serious if I didn't have songwriting as an outlet I would be you know I I'd be a bit I'd feel like crazy because I feel quite powerless in my life sometimes I've had terrible boyfriends <laughs> I know it sounds really corny but when you've got that finished prod like product of a song that you're really like a proud of and just to know that you've created that like it's quite a nice feeling yeah I mean if you have if you're writing music and you're taking that time even if you're doing it on your own with your best friends or with anything the most incredible thing about today's world is you can put that on the internet within seconds. You can make yourself a MySpace, you can get it out there. That wasn't that luxury when I was growing up and that has made such a difference just to getting yourself heard. And so many bands have been signed and noticed from that. Record labels do pay attention to that. People getting PRS money is like four, like women, 14%. Oh, but that's just kind of ridiculous. Everything should be kind of... What's that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Turn> <laughs> and the music industry has seemed to have the attitude that sometimes it can be a bit of a man's world and a lot of like, I know, lads bands and stuff that kind of take over. But yeah, I never felt like it was something that I couldn't do or anything like that. But I think it's important, really important for women to be pushed in music because that, that stereotype needs to go. And I don't think it is as bad as it was. I think there is a lot more women in music now and I think that's incredible because people want to be that person. When you see someone on stage and it takes one time just to go, wow, I want to be that person and that's that's really powerful. And if I even did that just to one person, that would be absolutely incredible. It would be such an amazing feeling to, to think that you've inspired someone. I don't know, I feel like it is getting better. Like there's more and more girls starting to do music. It's quite a male dominant sort of thing. That, that there's lots of men around all the time, so it's like, oh, we're going to take the space. So if there's like, um, if you go to a gig and there's a bill and you're like the only woman 
there with a the guitar. There's quite a lot of pushing, like shoulder pushing of like, or like, you know, a bit of an intimidation for to let us take our space, like, and you really have to fight. Girls and women see that what's presented to them isn't that, doesn't look that appealing, maybe. Like you say, like, it's like you either have to be a kind of a front for something else, or it's that thing of like, maybe, you know, there's kind of lots of rules, you know what I mean, yeah. about the way you, you know, even, yeah, the way you look. If what you're making sounds weird or freaky or, or stupid, then it's probably really good. Get it, yeah, get it out there. And even if like one person laughs at you, like loads of people have laughed at me, then just ignore them. Brush yourself up and <laughs> try, try again. <laughs> you can brush it up and try again and try again. When you listen back to your own music, it always sounds wrong. And sometimes when I was starting out, I would hide those songs because I felt like it sounded wrong. I didn't want anyone to hear it. But it's just, it's natural. Everybody has that. You should just, no matter how it sounds to you, you should know it's probably 150% times better. And you should just whack it out there and not be afraid. <laughs> Don't wait for a record label to sign you before you think yeah, that's the time to write songs. Just get on with it and do like, I don't know, bedroom demos buy yourself a guitar or a keyboard or drums or just sing and just like don't feel like you have to wait for something it's just good to do it like today like there's no time like the present and even if you're just playing a gig at your friend's party it that will just that that will just give you the adrenaline and the drive just to go right we could yeah we can do this and you know what it might that band might not last for like the rest of your life but it gives you the experience and the confidence to go on to progress and to write other things and write things with other people and yeah, <laughs> go for it. <laughs>